Hi guys, thanks for joining me. I'm Marilyn. On this video, I'm going to make a design in Cricut Design Space, cut it out on some HTV that I got off of Amazon, and I'll link to this in the description below. Once I cut it out, I'm going to add it to this shirt. Now this is a shirt that I got at Hobby Lobby. I love how it has the white around the sleeves, and I really like having a v-neck so it's not tight around my neck. I'm going to cut this out with my Cricut Maker, but you could use any cutting machine that you like. I'm going to press it on with my Easy Press 2. Again, you could use a heat press or whatever you use. Then I'll press it on using my Cricut Easy Press mat and a Teflon sheet. Now, you may not be interested in the design so much because it's going to be a shirt that I wear on some of my future videos. So it's going to say Making with Marilyn. Even though you're not going to be making this design, I think that I'll have some tips and strategies you might find helpful. If you haven't subscribed, please consider doing so, and then tap that bell and let YouTube know you want to be notified for all videos I post in the future. Also, make sure that you have your notifications turned on. I have a blank screen in Cricut Design Space. Now the first thing that I want to do is I want to go ahead and put a square or a rectangle up to mimic my shirt. The only thing I want to do is just have it be approximately the same color as the shirt. So I added a rectangle, dragged it so it was large. Actually, it's a square, 14.5 by 14.5. And then I'm going to select this blue color right here. Okay, now I'm ready to go ahead and start adding some text. So I'm going to click on the text tool, and then I want to type in all caps the word MAKING. Then I want to go up here and change the font. So I'm going to click on this arrow so I can see my fonts. And then I'm going to say, just show me what's on my system because I don't have Cricut access. Now you could scroll through here and look at the fonts, but I know I want to use one called Hobo Standard. It's right here, so I can just click on it, and that changes my text to the right font. Now I have to click onto the word to change the color. So I'll change it white because that's the color of my HTV. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and select the word and just drag it larger. I want the letters to be about two inches tall. And I think so that I can match exactly the other word, I'll just make it exactly two inches tall. Now I want the word making to be curved. So before I do anything else, I'm going to go ahead and just click on right here where it says curve, and I'm going to slide it to the right which will make it higher in the middle and lower on the sides. Now that's a good curve, but I need to decrease my letter spacing so that they'll move back together. Once I've done that, I'm going to add just a little bit more curve. Not a whole lot, just a little bit. And then once again, play with my letter spacing. So now what I want to do is I want to go ahead and ungroup these, and then I'm going to click on this G. Because I'm not wanting to slide it exactly sideways, I'm going to have to just move it with my cursor. If I wanted to slide it sideways, since it is highlighted, I could just hit my left arrow, and that's what it would do. That's probably pretty close, but let me go ahead and move it up so that it's following the right curve. Okay, I think I need to move the K away from the I just a little bit. And then my M, I'm going to hit my right arrow, move it over a little bit, and then slightly up. Now what I want to do is hit the command, or hold the command down and add my G to it. I wanted to see if the G is about as low as the M. And the M is a little bit lower, so I can either raise the M or lower the G. And in this case, I think I will raise my M just a little bit. Now, a little rotation probably wouldn't hurt as well. Okay, so again, I'm going to hold the command down, add my G. They're closer. Now, what I could do is just go align and align the bottom. That really pulled my G down. I'm going to move it over just a little bit so it's closer to the end. Add my M back to it, and I like that. So I'm going to go with that. 
I say I like it. Of course, I'm going to change something. I'm going to move my end down and over to the right just slightly. Okay, so for now, I'm going to go ahead and select all the letters holding the command down. I can either, I can either select them over here, or I can go over here and do the same thing. And then I'll go ahead and click on Group. Now down here, I want the word Maryland, but I want it the opposite curve. So let's go ahead and type it. I'm still on Hobo Standard. I have my caps lock on. So I'll type Maryland. And then I'll just move it down, change it white. And then once again, I used two inches for the height. The proportions are locked, so when I change the height, that's going to change the width proportionately. Okay, so now I need to curve that the opposite direction. So I'm going to click on Curve. Now I'm going to slide this to the left. Once again, I want my letters closer together. I'll go just a little bit closer together yet. Okay, so now I need to hit ungroup and I need to start sliding some letters. Now I want to try to keep the ends about where they are. So now I'm going to slide my L and then my I just slightly. Hmm, I think I will slide my Y over just a little bit and also the N. And my M just a little bit as well. Now, if I wanted to check to see that the curve on the bottom was good, which I think it looks pretty good, but here's what you can do. You can click on shapes, get a circle, unlock the proportions so you can drag it to be an oval, and then just take that down to your word. Now, in my case, it needs to be a little bit deeper of an oval. There we go. Now I can adjust anything I need to adjust. So maybe my N needs to be curved a little bit because look, it's not touching it there, but my M is. Now before I do that though, I probably ought to make sure that the oval's in the center. So I'm going to hold my command down and add all those letters to it. Okay, that's going to cause a problem. First thing I need to do is group my letters. Sorry about that, guys. Because if I didn't group them, then when I tried to center them on the oval, they would all come to the middle. So I have them selected, the letters. I'll add my oval to it. Now I'm going to say align, center horizontally. Okay. So now my N is kind of like my M. And really, I'm happy with that. I'm just going to stick with that. But you could adjust your letters based upon how you see them touching the oval. All right, let's move this down just a little bit. I'll add making with it a line center horizontally. Now, I just want my design to be about nine inches wide. So now I'm just going to drag this. It is locked, so it's going to stay proportional, which I want it to. Drag this until it's about nine inches wide. I don't care if it's exactly nine inches. If I did care that it was exact, I could just go up here and change it, put it on exactly nine inches. Okay, I want to add the word width in the middle, but I want to give it a little flair. So I'm gonna do it in a cursive font. So let's go to text. And then in all lowercase, I'm going to type the word width. Now let me go ahead and change that to white. And then I don't want hobo standard. Okay, so I'm going to look for a different font. And I know which one I want. It's this one right here. The Cyrus script, something like that. And then I'll change it white. All right, let me just drag this larger. That's too large, but I'm going to start with that because I want to start moving my letters together. So I'll decrease my letter spacing. Now, I like the spacing of these two, so now I'm going to ungroup. And I'll click on the T. I'm going to hit my left arrow, and that moves it over. 
Oops. Okay, I need to be a little closer, but I don't love how the T and the I came together. I don't like the I. I'm going to select it, unlock it. I want to make it larger or taller. Then I think I want to move it down so that the dot over the I doesn't connect to the T. Okay, so now I'll make it a little bit shorter. Then I'm going to go ahead and unlock my W, make it just a little bit taller as well. Okay, so I like that. I'll click on my H, hit my left arrow, or I can just drag it manually. And I think I'd like that to be a tiny bit closer. There we go. Now what would happen if I change the slant of the T? I almost don't like quite how much they're slanted. I'm going to make this W a little bit larger and decrease the slant of it. I'll move it over just a little bit so it'll weld nicely. Okay, I like how it's low here and here. That kind of offsets each other. Before I thought it was just too short compared to how low this is. So now I'm going to select not that. Let's get to the right word. My H. Then I'll hold the command, click the rest of the letters here, and I'll click Weld. Now if I did not click Weld, if you're a newbie, let me show you what this would look like. This is going to look crazy. Oh, it's not compatible because this thing's too big. So let's... I don't want to hide it because then I can't see my words. So let's just make this a lot smaller. Okay, so let me show you if I were to make this right now what this would look like. I'm going to click make it. It doesn't say Marilyn the right way. I'm sorry, making the right way or Marilyn the right way. And the letters aren't connected. And I'll tell you how to fix all that. First of all, we're going to weld the letters in the word with. So holding the command, I'll select them all over here and I'll click weld. All right, so that's going to fix my word with. You see it's all together now. To fix the rest of it, first of all, I need to get everything where I want it. So I'm going to select all three words and I'm going to say align, center horizontally. And then I could also say align center vertically. But watch what happens. My making and my Maryland are going to come together. So I don't want that. So to get the width in the middle, I'm going to select making, hold the command down, add Maryland to it. And I could either group or attach those. Then holding command down, I'm going to add the word width to it. Now I can go up here to a line and say center vertically. All right, and the last thing I need to do to make this cut out the way you see it on the screen is I need to attach my making in Maryland to my width. You have to attach everything. Let me try it again. I'll show you. Make it. My making in Maryland is good, but my width is in the wrong place. So to make it cut the way you see it on the screen, you have to attach everything together. Now what that does is, it does waste a little material. It's not the most efficient way to use your material, but it makes it very, very easy to lay out on your shirt. So now if I click Make It, it's all perfectly in the right place. There's one more step though. First of all, I'm going to go ahead and get rid of my square. I'm just going to delete it. Then I'm going to select my design and I'm going to go ahead and flip it horizontally. You can either do it here or when you click make it, you can tell your machine to mirror it. Now mine's already flipped, so if I mirror mine, it's going to be back the right way. Either way is fine. If you tend to forget to hit the mirror, then just go ahead and mirror or flip horizontally your design. So I'm ready to cut this. I'm going to turn the camera angle around and we'll continue working. Now, before I do, I'll click continue and then I'll show you how I'm going to select my material. I'm just going to select Everyday Iron-On for this brand 
Now my Cricut light should be flashing and it's telling me use my fine point blade. Now in case you're interested, here's the vinyl I'm using. And what I like to do is I like to put a label on my vinyl that tells me what settings to use. So on this one you can see I'm going to preheat my material for 2 to 3 seconds, press it at 300 for 10 to 15, and it is a cold peel. I like to just leave my vinyl on my roll. To me it seems like I waste less if I do that because I can just cut around my design. Now I really like to check my blade each time I cut. I'm going to go ahead and lift that out, you push right here, and then clean off anything that's on the blade. Also make sure your mat's under your little clips. So putting just a little bit of pressure right here, really not a lot of pressure, just making sure it's actually pushed up against the rollers. I'm going to go ahead and load my mat. Then once the C's flashing, you go ahead and press that and it'll start cutting. Now one thing I didn't mention, with most HTV, you want to make sure that the clear carrier sheet is on the back and that you're actually cutting through the vinyl. And I'll show you a tip on how to make sure you have the right side up when I turn the camera angle around. For now, I'm going to go ahead and unload my mat. Now before I take my roll off, I want to go ahead and cut around this. And it might be hard for you to tell where the cut lines are, but I can tell exactly where they are. So I'm just going to cut slightly below them. Then to actually remove my design, I like to flip my mat over. That way I can hold my design down so I'm not stretching it or causing it to buckle. Now earlier I was saying I can show you how you can tell which is the side that goes down, which is the carrier sheet, and which is the side that goes up. So I can tell this is the carrier sheet and it is very hard to push through. You can actually get through it with your weeding tool, but it's very difficult. On the vinyl side, you can poke through the vinyl very easily with your tool. So when you're putting this on your mat, if you're not sure which is the carrier sheet that goes down on the mat, you can just start poking in a corner where you know it's not going to be cutting. So this HTV weeds very nicely when the cut is good. Really, you can just grab it and start pulling it away. Oh, I thought I was done, but I just noticed that there's still a center in that W. So flip it over, check it out, turn the angle so the light shine on it in different ways, and then you often, the little cut lines will stick out like a sore thumb. Okay, so my design's ready. Let's go ahead and bring the Easy Press 2 over and we'll set it. Now I want to press this at 300 degrees for 10 to 15 seconds. So I'll turn my Easy Press on. Right now I have the temperature really high for sublimation. I'll go ahead and turn that down to 300. And then I'll probably go ahead and do the full 15 seconds. So now I just need to wait for this to get up to the right temperature and we're ready to add our design to the shirt. So I want to make sure that my seams really are at the side like they should be. Then I think what I'll do, since this seam is straight, I think I'll put it at the top of my Easy Press mat and line it up with it. Hopefully that will help me get my design on straight. Now remember, you're supposed to preheat for two to three seconds.
Then, so I can make sure I get this centered correctly, what I can do is take the outside two edges, put them together, the edges up here together, and just make a crease in the center of the design. So now I can see the center of my design is right there. And since this is a v-neck shirt, it's pretty easy to see where the center of my shirt is. Now typically people say to have your design about three finger widths down from the collar. Now maybe that assumes that it's a round neck collar, I'm not really sure. But I'm just going to place it, it's about three quarters of an inch below this seam. Then I'm going to lift this up and look at it just to make sure I feel like it's straight. Now since the design really isn't straight across, I'm not going to be too particular. Okay, I like that. Now one thing I just thought about is this seam holds my design up a little bit. So I'm going to try to have the top of my easy press just under this thick seam. Now it's not required, but I like to use a Teflon sheet. I just feel better when I do that. And in this case, it's going to help me line up where the easy press should be. My design is less than 10 by 12, which is the size of my easy press, so I'll be able to do this in one pressing. If your design is larger than your easy press, then you can just do it in two presses. I was just making sure that it was hot above, below, and to both sides of where the design was to make sure I really had it covered. I'm going to add just a little bit more heat right up here. It was hot above it, but not as hot as it was beside it and below it. Now with this being a cold peel, I really need to let that cool off. If you don't, if you try to take the carrier sheet off a cold peel now, you could find that your vinyl stretches when you try to remove this. So as tempting as it is, just let it cool down. It'll be ready within 10 minutes. Hopefully I took some of that glare off with turning my lights down above. I am going to leave my easy press on because once I take this carrier sheet off, I'm going to go ahead and press once again with the Teflon sheet on the front, and then I'll also press from the back. Now the other thing I'm going to do is go ahead and take this off the pressing mat, because the purpose of the pressing mat is to help the heat conduct. So I'm going to lay this down on just my cool tabletop. And it's only been a few minutes. It's already feeling pretty good, but I'm going to go down, get some iced tea, and I'll see you in a minute. This is plenty cool. So let's go ahead and take this off. So this is nicely adhered, but I want to go ahead and give it another pressing. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and press this again, just for about five seconds, putting a lot of pressure down. And then again from the back side. This time I'll go ahead and go about 15.
So there it is. I think it turned out super cute and you are going to see this in future videos if you watch my future videos. Thanks so much for joining me and sticking it out till the end. Until the next video, bye-bye.